the importance of small and medium enterprises in the economy of any nation cannot be overemphasized. Experts say the importance of the sector is critical to the development of any economy as they possess great potential for employment generation. The support from private individuals indeed cannot be wished away and it is born out of the concern of the challenges faced by the business owners to sustain their venture. As study shows, more than 80% of them in Nigeria fail within the first five years of operation. Well, we're now joined by Nelly Agbogu, a renowned business expert, to speak on the importance of SMEs to Nigeria's economy, even as the country faces economic instability. She recently hosted a gathering of SMEs in Kano at the NBC Trade Fair event. It's great to have you on Arise. Afternoon and welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Right, and let's get straight into it. You know, right now, the topic, the main topic of conversation is the state of the economy and how hard it is for everybody. But of course, we know that SMEs are probably feeling it harder than most. Can you give us a little bit of insight into the, this existential threat to SMEs and some of the mechanisms and strategies uh, that you've seen coming into play for SMEs to survive? So what has been happening, especially with the whole um, foreign exchange and dollar rates just fluctuating, has really, really impacted a lot of business owners, especially those who are into manufacturing and you know, importation. And you could see them trying to look for how best they could reduce their cost of production or try to look for alternatives. So what I've asked, I feel personally is that most business owners are actually looking for more ways to find a visible way to increase sales, irrespective. So if you have um, been doing business only in a certain location, how can you expand your horizon and make sure that you make more sales? And that is what I think will actually help a lot of business owners going forward. Well said. Now, when it comes to access to finance, we know that's, that's an age-long challenge and is still present with mm -hmm. us today. I'm just wondering what creative leading or lending models, I should say, or incentives can expand the access to capital and investment, considering the, all the factors that are, are at play at the moment? So for me, I think that um, for access to finance, um, a lot of people really right now are very skeptical about loans, about trying to take money because of the way that things are. So what I think that people could actually do is to come together to see how best they can push their business forward and look for ways to get more grants. There are many grants within the country that people don't even know about and look for how to go ahead to assess it. I think we need to research more and understand how we can do that. And also one of the things that we do, um, I personally do with at NBC Trade Fair to try to see how I could help business owners to come together. And that's what we did in Kano recently on the 3rd and 4th of February, where we actually had a lot of business owners come together. And you see them instead of looking for ways to get loans, but they're now making sales in millions in two days, and that has really been impactful. And we plan to do this over to other cities in Nigeria. We're also going to Benin uh, next month. And we also plan to even export business owners and go into, the Lond into London um, in July, just to be able to make sure more businesses have more sales. Yeah. And we'd like to thank you, Nelly, as well, for your patience. And you were discussing the importance of SMEs. And I remember um, you mentioned um, what you were able to do recently. I yes. believe you said, was that in Kano State? Yes. Kano, Kano State on the 3rd and 4th and looking at how people were able to make um, um, huge millions, millions, millions yes. um, in just two days. Thank you for briefing us on that. But um, you were, you were touch, talking about coming together. Then mm -hmm. that, that collaborative um, aspect you're talking about for SMEs to be able to survive. Yes. Are you seeing enough of that? Yes, I've actually seen enough of that. A lot of people are now becoming more open to collaboration than competition. People are now understanding that the binding thing that everybody is fighting against is poverty. And we need to come together to make sure that we fight poverty. So instead of seeing someone else as your competitor, you're saying, how can I work with this person to increase my, my um, revenue for my business? And that is just what's happening. You now see people who come say, hey, let's come together and buy a RAM and share and sell. We do me sharing. You see people doing a whole lot of things coming together to do that, even in terms of collaboration online or social media, just to help to boost their own um, situation. And this is really what and using that also to make sure that they increase their sales for themselves. Now, one of the unique things about the Nigerian SME space is that 
In comparison to other parts of Africa, you'll find that the conversation is always around, oh, the government needs to do this to help us, the government needs to do this to help us. Whereas in Nigeria, you find SMEs generally don't look to the government for anything. Yes. Uh, they find a way to resolve their issues and just keep pushing along. However, given the current situation, government intervention is more critical than ever. What are some of the interventions you would like to see from the government? Um, I would like the government to really put, uh, help a lot, especially it's giving us tax breaks. Um, there are some people who really genuinely need to get, have a break on that before we start paying a lot more. And also, I would like them to also be involved in helping these SMEs with grants and let it be visible that this is how the systems that was used, maybe hand it over to a private sector to be able to make sure that these monies are disbursed to the people who need it and can also, we can see a track record of those people use it to grow their businesses. Um, I have been a beneficiary of um, grants that has helped my business to where it is. And I have also seen, you know, know how it could also be able to be beneficial to people. And also, I also feel that um, we also should have like a certain level of um, make it easy for people to get some sort of um, registration. Let me use, for instance, um, a small business is starting up and wants to get NAVDACRIF certified. There's a lot of things the person needs to do. And sometimes they, when they think about all those things, they're like, oh, let me not start at all. So let's make it easy. Let has to be an ease for business, for small businesses to be able to grow and scale in Nigeria. Very well said. Now, I think this is a very, a very important conversation to have when we see the high yes. um, percentage of youth unemployment. So when it comes to vocational training, technical st skills development and education, for improving um, Nigeria's SME's workforce. What would you like to see shift in those areas? Um, so I would like to see, um, this is, has to, going to be both from the, from the SMEs and also from the government, right? Mm -hmm. From the SME, I want to also see more willingness. Sometimes people are actually very reluctant to even try to do simple research that will help their businesses. There are many platforms online that give you free trainings that will allow you to be able to jumpstart your business and make you to stand out. But most of the time, people don't even want to you know, use all this kind of free resources. So we want to see more business owners, more youths try to, you know, st stop being relaxed or stop waiting for the food to be served and go out to go and make research and look for places where you can actually um, just start your, your business and all. And also from the government point, point of view, I would like to see that the government, you know, looks through us and know that, see, we, the SMEs, are the bloodline of this country. Whether we like it or not, every country knows that. And so we Nigerians need to take it seriously and let you look to us, how can we help the SMEs to scale and when we do that, Nigeria is better for it. Now, of course, you work closely with a number of SMEs. Yes. Uh, you know, I don't want to harp on, on the economic situation, mm -hmm. but it's a reality and people are affected, yes. especially yes. SMEs. If you were to give a toolkit to SMEs right now, let's call it a 2024 toolkit, mm -hmm. what would you advise that each business person, each sm uh, d d small, small to business. medium enterprise harness and hold on to just to make it through this year because it's 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 a it's a hard year so far to be sincere and i'm trying to look at it from a business that is just starting from scratch and really don't have a lot of funds i would like you to first of all don't think about opening up a shop I know some people will like, oh, yes, it's not what you need now. You have to look for how you can dominate the air. And what do I mean? By using social media to kickstart your business. I have seen many businesses who have really done so well from just having an online space. Understand the power of your digital real estate, which is that your space. Know how to be able to, you know, um, invest in yourself in terms of skills like copywriting skills, skills like editing skills, little things. Because the truth is that if you want to really go far, you need to learn some little basics. How do you use all those Canva and all that? Just learn how to use all those ones. That's number one. The next thing is to go out to do that research. As I said, there are many companies that have given out grants. All they are looking for is, are you worthy? enough to take this money. So go out and get yourself ready. What are their requirements? How can you fit into this place? I have seen someone who is selling a creek and has gotten over $200,000 in grants. Oh, Ooh. yes. All Girl. the person, yes, it's, it's sustainable energy. <laughs> but that's what the person is selling, sustainable um, green 
whatever she called it, but she made it look as if it's is sustainable fashion yes i think that's what she mentioned sustainable fashion and that's just it so how do you carve your business to also become into the the, the million, our goals the you know dg goals and all that how do you do all those things when you be able to align your business that way you start to see that you can actually scale because really, um, I see a lot of people who are always in a hurry. I want to open up a store. That's, that's not actually the first thing. Grow online, have a digital real estate, hold on to that stuff, and then use it and then start. And also, I also tell the person, don't look at what others have done. Look for what works for you. Try to be as authentic as possible. Don't try to, you can, even if you want to emulate what others are doing, it's fine. But bring out yourself in your business. You know, with time, you start to scale. Don't be in a hurry to start delegating in and say oh someone is in my dm no it takes a lot to get to that level be the one even till now i have over three hundred forty-seven thousand followers on instagram but i still answer my dms once in a while like but it took a long time before i got to you know say oh somebody should help me answer so don't be in a hurry to become a boss and you forget the to do the main things that brought you to where you are so that's just what i will say you know collaborate be humble you know try to go out and be serve others and also be able to to get people to work with you and and celebrate your wins no matter how little you know people think that they have to have owned the house or no if you if you manage to make one thousand naira after you have tried for three months to do with zero just celebrate it people actually and nigerians love a hard-working person when they see you're hard-working and they see you're really awesome they want to help you they will want to grow, help you to grow and they will do all they can to push your business so be that person that is also celebrating yourself as well so that people can see because if you don't say what you're doing people will not know so there's no way they will be able to help and support you and why I'm really talking about this digital real estate and your, your platform is because um, a lot of people who are even going to help you will judge you from what they're saying online so how do they help you if they are coming there to see that you're not even serious with yourself and your business even us at NBC Trade Fair when we want to get vendors who are going to work with us we go to check their pages and see oh are you serious or not do you understand so we check all those things and before we can use and say this is part of our criteria if you're not serious there how do we know you're going to really be serious so i see a lot of people not being serious there and we need to um think about that one thing you said a couple of times is when it comes to not putting enough energy in research yes. and people not being aware of grants yes. that you've also profited from and you said it a number of times, so I'm just wondering, what have you seen that has contributed to the magnitude of those who are not um, exploring these options, this abundance of options that you're, 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 you know, you're emphasizing on? What's the, what's the issue across board? I will say that, um, number one, I feel that um, we are a country of people who just don't like to try to push ourselves to do. You are so you, you, you go online, you see someone talk about um, what is Google. Like you can actually go to Google to find out what is Google. Like instead of you to go and try your best to do a research for yourself about little things, you would like someone to help you to answer. And then onwards, I see that a lot. And you know, not many people um, go out to just say grants that are for for agriculture or grants for Nigerians in, in fashion. No, but not many people go out. And when they see all those things, sometimes they feel like they, are, they don't have the criteria. And even if you don't have the criteria right now, can you walk towards it? Can it be like a long-term goal for yourself? Or you look for someone who writes these grants to help you out. Because just the same way we also need help in other aspects of our lives, you may need someone to help you. And when you ask questions, this kind of people will come out and you can, they can help you to be able to help you to streamline your business. The quiz, I just want them to, first of all, have that urge to say, I know that I am not comfortable where I am right now. There has to be a shift in my life, in my business. And the only way I can do that that shift is by making sure I do something different and what is that thing I have to go and research for it so that's just it fantastic now customs rate is at 1400 naira plus at yes. the moment uh, seems to be changing on a regular basis now it's just a sign of the times would you discourage SMEs from getting involved in businesses that require import 
is this time for us to look inwards or is there a way we can make it work? Uh, very briefly. I know this is like a really no, heavy question. But no, yeah, but I would, I would say that if you could continue your imputation, it's fine. But I want many Nigerians, especially because if you look at the SMEs, most of the businesses they do is into fashion and all those kind of stuff. There are many of them that are in Balogun that have millions and millions of all these dresses, but they don't have the visibility online. Instead of going to go and be that person that is always important, why don't you go and meet those people? Have some sort of negotiation and say, hey, I'm going to buy this maybe at a, a bigger amount, like just buy off everything the person has, and I will be selling it from for you. Because there are actually so much opportunities. And this thing I'm saying to you, I have seen it happen with lots of SMEs. They go into the market, Balogun market and all, and they'd be able to have some negotiations with the people who have all these goods and say, hey, I know you don't have the online visibility. I have it. Let me help you to sell off your goods. And at the end of the day, we, I will give you your money you're using to sell. You have to bring down the cost for me and I take my profits. So at the end of the day, it's a win-win situation. So before we try to go out there, what can you do locally? What can you, even me, I had to, because I have a food business too. I had to change from using almonds to start using cashews because I could not continue to import almonds. It's getting too expensive. Some of these things, and if you continue to make it too expensive, who will buy it? So look, look at inwards and start to experiment. Okay, the places where almonds work, can I you know, substitute it? And it worked perfectly well. So these are the things that we need to do. Look inwards. How do you reduce your costs? Because the main thing is not to do increasing your prices. It's actually how to reduce your costs. Thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. Look Brilliant. inwards. I've, I've learned so much from you, and I'm sure our viewers have as well. Thank you for taking the time Thank to be so here. Much. Thank we you. appreciate your time as Thank always. You. Um, founder, NBC Trade Fair, Nelly Abogu. Thank yes. you. Yes. Thank be you. <laughs> Thank you.